Hi, I'm Teo Nikolakis with Audioholics, and in this episode, we'll be talking about Soundevo's WS66i zone amplifier and controller. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So let's get started. We audiophiles and home theater aficionados love our AVRs, pre-pros, and power amps. Even if we own them, we typically won't put on our conversation list to cover controllers or zone amps. Those components live a pretty simple existence and all they do is extend audio to other parts of the house or at work, and they aren't packed with exciting technology either. So when our resident audioholic in chief, Gene Delasala, approached me to review Sound Avo's 1699 WS66i whole home audio distribution network controller, matrix and streamer, and app control, I confess I found the opportunity a bit perplexing at first. Yet, the more I explored the WS66i's feature set, the more I understood why Gene wanted me to take it for a spin. The WS66i delivers a potentially high value solution to individuals who are looking to expand their audio setups to support a whole home installation or leverage the WS66i as a centerpiece of a multi-speaker distribution setup. So let's do a deeper dive into this unit and you can decide if the WS66i has a place in your setup with the feature set you've been looking for. The WS66i is a rack mountable unit. It comes in a 2U form factor and sports an integrated circuit Class D amp capable of driving six pairs of speakers with a rated power delivery of 25 watts into 8 ohms, 50 watts into 4 ohms. This power should be more than ample for the majority of home or work installations. The onboard amplification is made possible by International Rectifier's IR4302 Power IC. It's a two-channel integrated analog input Class D audio amplifier in a 7x7mm package. Some of the features are that it requires no mechanical heatsink, it has overcurrent, over temperature, and under voltage protection with a self-reset feature, it has start, stop, click noise reduction, and it has clip and fault reporting outputs and high noise immunity. Now, should you need more power, the zones can be bridged together to deliver 100 watts per speaker into 8 ohms. And I should note that some custom installer volume controls like the ones from Nile that I use in my home recommend a maximum of 100 watts of power through the volume control circuitry. Now, should you need even more channels, the WS66i sports a ribbon cable expansion port on the rear. You can daisy chain up to two Soundevo 1U M66 EXT 6 zone expansion amps that cost 799 MSRP. Such a configuration delivers six sources distributable into 18 stereo zones for just under $3,300 in a 4U form factor. Do the math. That comes out to a ridiculously low cost of just $184 per amplification channel. Now, I installed the WS66i into my salamander rack, which I have outfitted with rack rails. The WS66i comes with the rack ears pre-attached, and they're easily removable should you want to install the WS66i on a shelf or on top of a cabinet. Now, what's neat is the unit also includes feet pre-installed. Now, the unit's physical fit and finish is appropriate for its price. The WS66i has a nice glass front panel, and it sports LEDs for each zone. The LEDs glow blue when the zone is off and white when it's powered on. 
Unfortunately, the LEDs can't be dimmed or turned off. So you gotta be careful in terms of placement, especially if you're gonna put this unit in a highly visible area that where it may complete, compete with um, video or other displays. So at this point, it's where the WS66i's controller features come front and center. The front panel features two USB-A ports and they're designated as inputs three and four. The USB ports take USB-based media and deliver them as available sources. While USB media may be a little bit of a legacy source, it's nice to have that feature available. Now the rear panel features two single-ended analog inputs. Input one supports a pretty unique feature. It supports a PA function that can be automatically routed to all outputs with a simple 12 volt trigger. So activate the trigger, you can have that number one input routed to all the zones. There are two 3.5 millimeter inputs designated as five and six for portable media players. Again, a little bit of a legacy option. Input six also sports an optional Toslink optical input for your choice of then of either analog or digital. What is really neat about the controller, however, is there's a parallel input three and four that's actually an AirPlay server. So what happens is you can use input three and input four as independent AirPlay destination endpoints to stream to. And then you can independently have either of those two AirPlay inputs routed to a particular zone. In case you're wondering, unfortunately, AirPlay one is on board. No, there is no AirPlay two. Therefore, it's nice that Sound Avo has two independent AirPlay channels to stream to, but the flip side is you can't group the sound able with other AirPlay 2 speakers. So there is that limitation to be aware of. Now, each amplifier output connects via Euroblock or Phoenix connectors. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Phoenix connectors, they're simply solderless screw connectors as opposed to the traditional five-way binding post that you would find on audiophile grade amps. It's quite common for zone amps to feature Phoenix style connectors. So everything with this unit is in line with what would be an industry standard. Bridging any channel, is really as simple as flicking a switch underneath the channel. Stereo and bridge configurations are clearly labeled on the rear of the unit, so you know exactly what you're doing. Now, each output zone has stereo preamp outputs for even further expansion. That means that there's ample flexibility for you or an installer to add additional amplifiers over and above the ribbon expansion ports. And that means you can integrate this with 70 volt systems, you can route signals to powered subs, or just about anything else you can think of. This expandability makes the WS66i a potentially appealing low cost solution for commercial applications too. Now, there are two Ethernet interfaces on the WS66i. LAN 1 connects to your network, and that's very important. LAN 2 functions as a single port switch or bridge interface for connecting another device. So maybe in close proximity, you want to connect a computer or you have a smart TV or other smart device, you don't need to purchase an additional, an additional switch for that purpose. That's a neat little option in case you're wondering uh, no, you can't use LAN 2 as a failover or a parallel port for a network interface. Um, I also want to make it a point to highlight that you have your choice of either internet, uh, Ethernet rather, or RS-232 control functionality. Now, only one can be active at a time. Uh, a simple slider determines which you're going to use. So if you're going to use the WS66i with the companion mobile app, you wanna keep that switch in the default ethernet position. Uh, there's a third RJ45 port that I wanna make note of, 
whose purpose is to serve as a PoE or power over Ethernet to control the optional keypads for the controller. Now, it goes without saying, and I want to make this uh, point clear for those of you who may not be super tech savvy, that you do not want to plug your network or other devices into this PoE port. Doing so may damage them permanently and fry some circuits. This delivers power to the keypads. So be very, very careful that you're using LAN 1 to plug into the network, the Ethernet 1 and LAN 2 or Ethernet 2 as a switch and use that only for the keypads. Now, there are seven trigger outputs on the WS66i. There's a trigger output for each zone should you wish to trigger on an audio device or conduct some automation specific to a zone. There's also an optional control out trigger that applies 12 volts DC when any zone is on and removes that 12 volt D signal, DC signal when all zones are off. Now there are two trigger inputs. One is PA and mute in. When a 12 volt signal is applied to the PA in, it will automatically route input one to all zones, as I mentioned before. Now this is intended to broadcast a single source to all zones automatically. And you can use it for PA functionality, for announcements if it was in a school or other setting. Now, if the 12 volt signal is applied to the mute in, it mutes all zones naturally. So for individuals who may consider integrating the WS66i into a home theater centric environment, I want to point out a potential point of frustration or perhaps a shortcoming or maybe more appropriately how you need to think about the architecture of the installation. There is no 12 volt trigger input to power on the WS66i. There's also no wake on LAN or WOL command to use it as part of an IP-based control system to power on the WS66i. Consequently, you're confined to the mobile app or the physical keypads or the optional remote that I'll touch upon in a second to power on the device. I do wish, I really do wish that Sound Evo had put some sort of either wake on LAN or trigger functionality to power on the zones. I think it would have made integration a whole lot easier if you're not using this as really the brains in a controller. But be it as it may, just realize that's one of the things you have to potentially work around. Um, if you are using RS232 control, however, you're in luck because I reviewed the RS-232 command set and there are indeed discrete commands for power on for all zones or individual ones. This may impact how you might think about designing the um, WS66i as part of a larger system if you're integrating it into a whole home uh, network or into a home theater uh, and if you're using the AVR and AVR pre-pro as your primary controller. So the absence of the 12 volt triggers personal preference or the wake on land functionality adds unnecessary complexity to a potentially high value product. Let me take a second to just talk to you about the different configuration options. So my review unit is what's called the WS66i AMP only. And that just includes the unit itself. So configuration requires the iOS or Android mobile app. There are three other configuration options available. One is called the WS66i kit package. And that includes six Decora wall units that are powered from the rear power over ethernet or PoE port. And then those will allow you to control each zone directly from the wall plate. There are two other configurations that include the wall plates plus six additional pairs of speakers. So those other two packages are called the WS66 I, and that includes six pairs of the company's IC640 CF in-sealing speakers and their 6.5 inch uh, diameter speakers for the drivers. And that is currently for $27.49.99. And then finally, there's another package that includes uh, six pairs 
of the larger 8-inch driver speakers, and that's the IC860CF, uh, and that's also a WS66i kit package uh, for $29.99. So if you're looking for this unit, if it's appealing, just be aware of those different configuration options because my review unit included different components that are not part of the standard package. Speaking of packages with the controllers, uh, Soundavo sent me one of the Decora controllers, as I mentioned, so here it is. It's a nice little unit. It fits in any uh, Decora-style enclosure, and it has circuit board on the back that isn't too deep, should fit just fine in most installations. Now, it just takes a standard Ethernet cable for power over Ethernet, um, but I do want to highlight one thing for the installation point of view, is once you pop this thing in, it's nearly impossible to get the Ethernet jack out because they put it in upside down. I wish they had flipped it around from that perspective. So don't use a screwdriver, use a plastic tool if you need to um, pull it out. On the flip side, as you'll see uh, in this quick video segment that I took, it's nice that it's backlit and you get immediate uh, display of the volume control. You can attenuate uh, or increase bass or treble right from this, and you can do input selection. So really nice functionality. I wish it was included in the lower end package, but if it's something that you would find highly functional, be sure to uh, make sure that you add that as part of your purchase. Setting up the WS66i is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is plug in the Ethernet cable into the LAN 1 port and make sure that your iOS or Android device with the downloaded app is on the same subnet network as the WS66i. From there, you can simply go into the mobile app, go into the settings and do discovery and it should automatically find the controller. Now, if you're not going to download the app and you're going to use an IP scanner, I want to caution you that you want to make sure that you are using an advanced IP scanner and you want to read the user manual. Here's why. There are multiple IP addresses assigned to the LAN port. Therefore, if you're doing an IP scan, what you're actually going to see is you're going to see the AirPlay controllers on the network not the WS66i controller. So you will not be able to configure it appropriately. What you'll need to do is use an advanced LAN scan scanner, as I mentioned, and then from there you can find the controller. All the steps to do that are in the user manual, but use the app, it's a whole lot easier. So here's what the app can do in terms of the control and functionality, which is pretty neat. The WS66i companion app is really the heart of the system and gives you centralized control. From the app, you can turn all zones off or on, plus you can introduce fine-tuned control over the settings on each particular zone. So in this case, I'll open up my kitchen zone, and what I can do is increase or decrease the volume. Likewise, I can increase or decrease the bass or treble for a particular zone, including the left and right balance for the speaker. I can mute the particular zone, and I can also power it off individually. Now, what I can also do through the app, which is really neat, is I can control the source that is feeding that particular zone. Um, what I did notice that I want to call to your attention is that if a zone is powered off, you can't successfully switch the source. So that's something to be aware of. Again, from the app, you can go in the configuration, you can add custom names for the zone, or you can add custom names to the source. So in this particular case, I'm going to change zone 5 to be AirPlay, and that way, if I'm selecting that source within a particular zone, it pops up as such. So you have all that granular customization for ease of use right within the app. Now I do want to highlight one item that if a zone is inactive, if you try to select the source, it won't catch. You have to make sure that the zone is powered on and active. You need to wait a second and then you'll be able to assign a different source, which makes sense, but just to be aware of that fact. Now there is another feature here in the app called party mode. Once you activate party mode, it makes every single zone the same volume and it feeds every source to every um, zone, the same source to every zone. Now, there's a little bit of a quirk with this, at least I think it's a quirk, is when you turn party mode off, it keeps the volume the same and it keeps 
the source the same. So it doesn't go back to the way it was. So just a little item to be aware of. Soundavo has an additional app called the Soundavo Player. It's available for both iOS and Android, and if you're an Android user, you want to pay special attention because the player allows you to stream to either of the two AirPlay controllers present on the WS66i. Launching the Soundavo Player will allow automatically search for the WS66i on your network and find it, and then it'll present to you the two AirPlay sources. By pressing the arrow, it'll expose the menu, which provides you the ability to select from Pandora, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Tidal, Napster, Cobuzz, or Amazon Music. If you have a subscription to any of these, you can simply select the service, and then you'll be able to play any music to Source 3 or Source 4 by streaming by artist, by um, you know album, or title, etc. What's really neat about this, however, is you can stream a different service to each of the two AirPlay controllers. So for example, if you have a Spotify account, you can stream Spotify to Source 3, and if you have a Tidal account, you could stream Tidal to Source 4. Now, even though this is an AirPlay 1 only controller, Soundavo does something really neat, and it allows you to group speaker sets within the app. So what you could do is you could play Taylor Swift on Source 3, and if you have Source 3 playing on Zone 1, 2, and 3, but you have Source 4 playing on Zones 4, 5, and 6, you can combine the two simply by dragging Source 4 down below the line in the app, and automatically now Source 3 and Source 4 will play exactly the same uh, streaming source, and the album or the uh, title that's playing and then what you can do is independently control each of the volume within those particular sources which is really neat now there's another couple of features that I want to draw your attention to you can rename the sources through the app which is neat you can get additional speaker information but you can also set up an alarm clock function so all you have to do here is set the time you can then set the music that you want playing and how often it should play should it play once sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and the default volume so you can set up these timers these alarm clocks rather quickly and easily within the app and then you can also set up six spotify presets so Pretty well thought out, overcomes limitation that's inherent within an Android device where you don't have a native AirPlay streamer. Now, I didn't necessarily cater to the app as much because I am an iOS user, and I think if you're an iOS user, you'll simply prefer to use the built-in AirPlay on your iPhone or on your iPad and just stream right from the music source. But it's neat to know that you have this option available through the app. Here at Audioholics, we have a reputation of finding products that seem to have similarities with others. And during my review period with the WS66i, I noticed that the unit had a lot of similarity with the back panel of the Monoprice 6-Zone Home Audio Multi-Zone Controller and Amplifier Kit. Yeah, that's a mouthful in and of itself. So. Both have almost identical features in terms of the number of amplification channels, the layout of the rear panel, the trigger outputs, IR ports, ribbon expansion port, to name a few things. So I reached out to Sound Avo, and a representative confirmed with me that the original engineer who designed the Monoprice six zone amplifier now works for Sound Avo. Now, while there is some shared design, Soundavo has nothing to do with the Monoprice unit they told me. And I do want to call out that there are some incredibly important differentiators between the two units. So number one, the Monoprice, importantly, has no digital features whatsoever. There's no network connectivity. There's no mobile app to control the unit. There's no onboard AirPlay. There are no USB ports and there's no party mode as I had shown and other features that can be enabled through the mobile app. So that's first important point. Number two, all functionality for any zone therefore has to be done via a control pad 
and you need to change the dip switches in order to have those control pads uh, function with a particular zone. Uh, number three, Sound Avo, in my opinion, has better aesthetics. So it has a glass front versus the all aluminum front, and the Monoprice just has a bare bones look versus the Sound Avo, which has a little bit uh, higher class look to it. And there's also a difference in the warranty. So the Sound Avo has a three year warranty, while the Monoprice has a one year warranty. Now, a representative from Sound Avo also told me that they have the in house expertise to service the unit, both in and out of warranty and for whatever it's worth the keypads are optional on the sound evo and you have to buy um, make sure you buy the special kit that includes the keypad Let me tell you a little bit about what my testing setup looked like. I used the WS66i, I used five of the six zones during my testing, and I used two of the zones using Atlantic Technologies IWCB52 in-wall speakers. Now, the IWCB52s are six ohm rated speakers with a sensitivity of 87 decibels. I also, in one of those setups, had an Atlantic Technology IWTS28 in-wall sub, and I was using one of the zones in bridge mode uh, for the WS66i. I also connected a pair of Revel IC15 in ceiling speakers uh, for a third zone. And then uh, those, in case you're not aware, are 8 ohm and uh, 85 dB sensitivities. And then finally, I had a zone set with a pair of Beale Street Audio ICA6 BBs in that um, fourth room. And those are eight ohm speakers with a sensitivity of about 89 dB. Um, I played with the WS66i in a variety of different uh, setups and content. So I never ran into a situation where I experienced that I was clipping the amplifier, where I felt as though I was straining the speakers, and I never felt as though uh, any of those speaker setups were lacking with power. Again, this is in a, a home environment. Um, the other thing that I can tell you is that bridging the subwoofer provided some pretty ample punch. Again, you're not going to do this as um, necessarily the core controller for a home theater setup. So, though conceivably you could do that, I guess. Um, and I used it primarily for background music as well as uh, using it in multi-zone for television and movie programming that I was playing in my main zone. Um, for my main source, I used my Anthem AVM60 while I had it, and then I transitioned to an Anthem AVM90, which I have in for review. And what I'll tell you is that switching out from the 60 to the 90 and then feeding the WS66i, I actually did notice, um, at least I perceived to notice a difference in the audio quality between uh, the two Anthem units. And I felt as though the 90 delivered a little bit better. So if you have this question about how transparent the WS66i is, you can infer whatever you want from that uh, anecdotal perception. Uh, I found the AirPlay controllers, which I think are gonna be a big draw for this, uh, to be decent. And let me explain to you how I use them is I'm, not necessarily a big fan of AirPlay 1 units at this juncture. AirPlay 2 uh, allows you to group speaker together. I think more and more homes are going to have hybrid environments where a customer might be having a zone amp like this and also bridging it with, let's say, um, a Siri-enabled speaker or an Apple HomePod or something similar. And what I did is I connected the WS66i's both of those AirPlay controllers to my Rune media server. So Rune was able to see them just fine. I was able to create them as uh, AirPlay endpoints through Rune, and I was able to stream content independently. And because I was using Rune, I was then able to group those two zones together, which you can't do natively through the WS66i. Um, I didn't use the USB ports. I don't really think that that's a, uh, a use case that the majority of individuals at this point are going to be using. But nevertheless, it's there as an option. I think it's a smart option and offers some flexibility, especially if you're doing this in a more um, commercial environment, perhaps. Um, the other thing that I will say is there's an additional companion app that I tested out with the WS66i. And this is where they try to integrate all the different music services, you know, Deezer or, or you know, Amazon Music or what have you. Uh, 
it tries to fundamentally address the problem that AirPlay One has is you can't group speakers. So you can do that. You can group the zones uh, in this particular app, but I really found it clunky. I, I don't recommend you use it. I think there's much slicker options out there, but if it's something that you're bent on doing, it addresses a particular uh, need or function, that app is there. I just found it really clunky to use. I didn't like using it. And if Soundevo is committed to making investment uh, down that path, you can obviously uh, you know give that a go, but wasn't something that I was particularly uh, satisfied with. So in summary, uh, if I was to say, who is this made for? Who's the customer and what are the use cases? Uh, I, I think that the WS66i is ideally suited for someone who may have a home theater set up and is using this to supplement whole home audio and doesn't mind the lack of automation and having to use a mobile app to turn everything on and off. It worked really well in that regard, I have to say. Um, I did find that I missed the ability to automatically trigger or turn on with auto sensing different zones that I had set up through the Anthem. I, I really wish that that was a feature that I missed, but if that's not a big deal to you, it works really well in that regard. I think that the WS66i has a real sweet spot if you do look at it as a primary controller and you're feeding it an analog source and you're using that control in that regard. So I could easily think of small restaurants, cafes, uh, places that are looking for uh, distribution in a commercial environment of speakers. You have lots of flexibility there. Or conversely, if you're in a home environment and even just keep the WS66i powered on all the time. Now, the flip side is, in case you're asking or wondering, no, you cannot use some sort of uh, remote power control. So if you turn the unit off, uh, at the power source and then you power it back on, the amp channels don't go back into the previous state where they were. So you do have to use the amp or the keypads uh, to manage powering them on. The flip side, in, I guess in the positive sense is you are dealing with class D efficiency, but it is an electrical draw. Uh, overall, I had no real functional issues. Um, there were some problems for about the first two months that was related to a version of the app on iOS. Uh, Soundevo eliminated all of those issues and I haven't experienced anything uh, substantively in the past two months. So, so far so good. Uh, it seems like a decent unit with high value that has a lot of different applications depending on your use case. So if any of those sound like that's a good fit for you, it's probably not a bad idea to check the unit out. And don't forget our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics, where you'll get direct access to us, have access to special content, and suggest content and topics for future shows or reviews. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the Soundevo WS66i. It's a really neat unit. It has a lot of strengths, obviously a lot of features. It's not a perfect fit for every person in every use case, but if it's a good use case and good fit for you, you might want to give it a go. So until next time, keep listening.